Ellen, Kevin, back with you. Look at some notable storylines in college football. Alabama quarterback Bryce Young day-to-day -day with a shoulder sprain ahead of the Crimson Tide's anticipated showdown against Texas A&M this weekend. The reigning Heisman winner suffered the injury in Saturday's win over Arkansas. According to head coach Kirby Smart, Georgia's star defensive tackle Jalen Carter will be out one to two weeks after injuring his MCL and the Bulldogs come from behind victory over Mizzou last weekend. Texas quarterback Quinn Ewers is aiming to be ready for the Red River showdown with Oklahoma this week. He's missed the last three weeks after suffering a shoulder injury against Alabama. Ohio State running back Trevion Henderson expected to return this week after missing last weekend with an ankle injury. Coach Ryan Day said he's on track to return, although the medical staff will make the final decision. And the AP poll released on Sunday seven new teams making their way into the top 25, including undefeated Kansas, which hosts undefeated TCU. College game day in Lawrence. Lance Leipold has the Jayhawks flying high. We've got plenty to clean up, that's for sure. But what, what you're, you know, what you're pleased is that you still find a way, and that's what good teams can do. You know, you haven't kind of hit the, you know, what you can be, but uh, as we know, uh, this is the biggest challenge so far. As far as a matchup, I, you know, again, that says something about what TCU has done as well to be where they're at, and to, to get this type of matchup, I, I think is. Probably surprising to a lot of people around the country, but it, it should be a good, great game. National champ Greg McElroy joining us now. They are the feel-good story of this college football season. What are your expectations this specific weekend as Kansas hosts TCU, a team that just put up 55 points against Oklahoma? Well, I'm crazy optimistic, man. I mean, I thought that there was a pathway for Kansas to be problematic for pretty much everybody because of their offense, Jalen Daniels, and how they can create and manufacture points. And then last week happened, Kev, and I watched them on defense. I'm like, goodness gracious, man, these guys are flying around. They won that game because of that side of the ball, and that was really the first time all year they'd shown a legitimate heartbeat on the defensive side. Now, let's not get twisted, man. Iowa State, they might have a couple warts on that side as well, but man, their pressure was relentless and they constantly made life difficult for the Cyclones offense, both throwing it and running it. But they're gonna be going against a different animal this week because Max Duggan played his tail off mm. last week, had a performance that would rival only Lamar Jackson because he had a 60-yard touchdown run and a 60-yard touchdown pass in one quarter. He's the first quarterback to do that in college football since 2016 when Lamar Jackson did it not once but twice. So when you're compared to Lamar Jackson, that means you're playing good ball. And Max Duggan is playing really good ball, very aggressive, pushing the ball down the field, and now shows that he can create with his legs as well. How about this? Uh, quarterback Jalen Daniels out of Kansas leads the FBS in total QBR. In third is TCU's Max Duggan ranking right behind C.J. Stroud. And that transition to the Buckeyes offense. When you watch them, they'll have a star out, uh, maybe one or two guys that are going to miss the game, and it does not miss a beat here. They're like video game like numbers with this offense here. When you watch Ohio State, how good are they in your mind when we talk about big picture playing in January? Well, they're legit. I mean, there, there's no denying that this offense has ridiculous firepower. I mean, we've seen that for years now. I mean, I don't think any of us are coming into the season like, oh, man, I'm shocked by what Ohio State's doing offensively. No, if anything, it's only further been solidified that they're every bit as good as they were a year ago. And maybe in some cases, they're slightly better. Here's the problem, Kev. And if I'm going to look at this just in a realistic sense, they haven't played anybody yet. Mm. And I know people say, well, what about Notre Dame? I get that. Notre Dame was really good, but it was far from an electric offensive performance. That was actually the one game this year where I just didn't think they were really all that special offensively. Now they were a little conservative, too, and they ran the ball at the end of the game because they knew their defense was going to hold up really well against the Irish. So uh, I think we're going to learn a little bit more, maybe not this week, against mm -hmm. Michigan State, who's got their own warts, but against Iowa – and against Penn State, and then later against Michigan, this team will get tested. It's just up to this point, they haven't necessarily seen a formidable front on the defensive side. Yeah, beginning of the season, you're circling this week because of what Michigan State did a year ago, but they have had so much trouble on both sides of the ball. Buckeyes facing Michigan State Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Greg, thank you so much. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.